Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica, famous laxative, and Minute Rub, Modern Chest Rub, brings you Duffy. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's where the elite meet Dita. Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, uh, Charles Coburn. Charles Coburn. Now, Duffy, don't hang up. So one week it ain't a dame. <laughs> huh? How's business? Uh, well, uh, we're running ahead of yesterday. Huh? Hmm. We were closed yesterday. <laughs> well, you know, Duffy, the lifting of the dim out has hurt us. Well, uh, nobody walks in here by mistake no more. <laughs> hey, you know, Duffy, I was uh, thinking, though, you know what we need here is a front man. A front man. Well, look, when a customer comes in uh, here, what, what's the first thing he thinks about? Right, about leaving. <laughs> so, uh, we've got to have a front man to block the door. And uh, this uh, turbine would be a natural for the job. Yeah, you ought to see the front the guy. <laughs> huh? His job? Well, we would uh, expect him to go up to the customers and inquire, for instance, uh, how they like the place here. Huh? Duffy, who's going to hit a guy his age? <laughs> well, look, uh, Duffy, I'm very busy now. Yeah, very busy. I'll, I'll call you back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Duffy's. Come on in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the Waiter, Miss Duffy, Johnny Johnston, Paul Weston and his orchestra, our special guest tonight, Charles Coburn, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Okay, Eddie. Uh, excuse me. Uh, hello? Duffy, will you stop bothering me with these phone calls? Well, I told you I'm busy. Listen, I am doing something very important. Goodbye. Okay, Eddie, deal out the card. <laughs> okay, Miss Archer. Boy, this is a wonderful game. What'd you say was the name of it? Uh, it's called Jim Rummy. <laughs> uh, named after that famous gambler, you know, uh, Diamond Jim. Diamond Jim? I, I thought you thought this game was called Jim Rummy. You're thinking of Eli Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> guy that invented the cotton gym. Uh, uh, it's a great game, ain't it, Eddie? Yeah, it's a great game. It's very educational. Uh, how much do you owe me now, so far? Uh, let's see. You, uh, gym me four times at 3,000 points, times it by seven is 21,000. 21,000 plus 10,000 for boxes is 32,000 multiplied by four. That's an even dollar. <laughs> Okay, here's the buck. Okay, I quit. Eddie, you can't quit a winner. How should I quit, a loser? <laughs> well, at least like a gentleman. How's that? Give me back the buck. <laughs> and the all, I learned you the game, don't forget. Um, Archie. Oh, yes, Miss Duffy. Uh, uh there's <clears throat> Charles Coburn who's coming down here tonight. <laughs> what about him? Why don't you ever have anyone like Robert Taylor or Tyrone Power to meet me? Tyrone Power or Robert Taylor to meet you? Look, Miss Duffy, when you've got steak at home, you don't go out to eat hash. <laughs> Besides, we ain't running no matrimonial brewery. <laughs> and further, besides, to attract guys like Tyrone Power down here, there's got to be sex appeal. And what is sex appeal? Nothing but sheer, plain animal attraction. Oh, animal attraction, huh? Miss Duffy, have you ever been to Earl Carroll's? Yes. Did you ever see crowds like that at the zoo? <laughs> Anyways, I thought you was all through with men since Breckenbridge Hodgson fell busted your engagement. He didn't bust the engagement. It was by mutual agreement. Mutual agreement, huh? Yes. He said he was through with me and I agreed not to bother him anymore. <laughs> And I certainly kept my part of the mutual agreement because every time I call him on the phone and he answers, I hang up. <laughs> and on the other hand, when he calls me, which he doesn't, and it's a fellow who sounds like him, I hang up immediately because I'm not one to break a mutual agreement. 
I wish the World Series was being broadcast so I'd have something to listen to. <laughs> what uh, started between you and Breckenridge? Oh, a silly thing. I loaned our engagement ring to my girlfriend, Vera Fogarty. Uh, she needed it to hint to a fella. <laughs> to hint to her, well, Miss Duffy, I don't blame Breckenridge for getting so after to get prize you the engagement ring. That's just it. I bought it. <laughs> you bought the engagement ring? Yeah, it was a Christmas surprise for me to him. Hmm. <laughs> One of them things a guy wouldn't think of to buy for himself. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? <clears throat> oh, uh, just a second, Miss uh, Duffy. It's Vera Fogarty. Oh. Hello? Oh, hello, Vera. What? You want to come down? Don't waste your time, Charles Coburn. <laughs> Uh, Vera, you still got my engagement ring? Who came for it? What man? From the finance company. But, Vera, the diamond is half paid for. I only owe them six (laughs) dollars. What? Oh, she got it back, huh? See, Vera, how'd you do it? Oh, she got engaged to him. (laughs) What? Me? No, Vera. I'm finished with men forever. Uh... Archie, exactly how old is Mr. Coburn? And exactly why do you want to know? Well, in case he happens to find me irresistible. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, the guy may have gray hair, but his eyes are still good. <laughs> now, please, leave me alone. The uh, heart. Oh. <laughs> Well, hiya, Finnegan. Uh, what you been doing all day? Uh, playing cards. Me and my brother was home playing solitaire with each other. The two of you is playing solitaire? So what else could we play? We only had one deck of cards. Uh, so uh, you're very handy with the cards, huh, Finnegan? Oh, uh, very handy, Art. Yeah, huh? What is your speciality? Uh... Uh, flipping them into a hat. <laughs> Finnegan, uh, would you like to play a little rummy? A little rummy? Why not? I'll play anybody. <laughs> Finnegan, I meant Jim Rummy. Uh, you uh, got any money? A uh, half a buck. Okay, I'll play you for it. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, uh, will it make any difference to you if I don't own a game? No, no, no. But it might make a little difference to you. <laughs> Here, uh, leave a steal of cards. Uh, take off your hat and coat, make yourself comfortable, put up the half a buck. Hey, Finnegan, what do you do? Don't take off your coat in this kind of weather. Please, Vonzel, this is my pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Finnegan can catch a cold awfully easily dressed like that. Well, ain't there thousands of other people that can catch cold just as easy as Finnegan? Certainly. Well, you get the idea, Vonzel. Oh, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know how easy it is to catch cold nowadays. Okay, Finnegan, now let us deal out the cards. But maybe you don't know how very easy it is to get after those distressing cold symptoms. When they're making you miserable, your nose is stuffed up and there's that aching feeling in your muscles, just get some minute rub, modern chest rub, and massage it briskly on your chest and back. Yes, it's as simple as that. And even before you finish, you'll feel a comforting sensation of warmth. As Minute Rub begins to soothe the tightness and discomfort caused by your cold. And at the same time, Minute Rub's active menthol vapors aid in relieving that congested feeling in your nose and throat. Remember, too, that Minute Rub won't harm clothes or linens. It's greaseless and stainless. Actually seems to disappear as you rub it on. So get after those aggravating cold symptoms with this modern chest rub that takes only a minute to use. Only a minute to start bringing welcome relief. Minute Rub. That's M-I-N-I-T-R-U-B. Minute Rub. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, what are you singing tonight? My Ideal. Oh, that's sweet of you. Uh, Johnny, have you been avoiding me because I've been engaged? No, I haven't. Haven't what? Haven't been avoiding you. Why? Because you're engaged. Well, I'm not. Well, that clears that up. <laughs> Deal of cards, Finnegan. Uh, 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 Johnny, you don't seem excited at the news. What news? I am at liberty. Give me death. <laughs> uh, come on, Finnegan. Deal of cards. Uh, sing, Johnson. Go ahead. Don't... <laughs> Girl in my mind, the 
one who is my ideal. Maybe she's a dream, and yet she might be just around the corner waiting for me. Will I recognize the light in her eyes that no other eyes reveal? But will I pass her by and never even know that she is my ideal? The girl who is my ideal Maybe she's a dream And yet she might be Just around the corner Waiting for me Will I recognize The light in her eyes No other eyes Reveal But will I pass her by And never even know that She is my ideal That she is my Okay, Finnegan, that's that. Uh, okay, uh, you owe me three dollars. <laughs> three bucks. Okay, here you are, Finnegan. Here's uh, 20 cents. Uh, I owe you the other half a buck. So, uh, when do I get it? Well, you'll have to give me your IOU for it. Uh, get it my IOU, dude. Ah, oh, you know I can't, right? <laughs> Well, uh, never mind. You're an old friend. I'll trust you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, dude. Hey, Arch. That fellow that just came in looks very familiar. I've seen him in the movies. The... Ain't that Fay Bainty? And again, that's Charles Coburn. Oh. Uh, Mr. Coburn, may I tell you that many great stars have uh, passed through these portholes? <laughs> but uh, you are the portliest of them all. Uh, and furthermore, may I say that we are indeed... Oh, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Duffy's, eh? Well, where's Duffy? He's home. He's smart. <laughs> Well, his uh, daughter is here. She ain't so smart. <laughs> I'll introduce you, Miss Duffy. Uh, and this is Mr. Coburn. I'm glad to know you, Miss Duffy. I'm sorry, Mr. Coburn, but May can never wed December. <laughs> Miss Duffy, December didn't even ask you. Oh, no? Did you see the look in his eyes? Forgive me, dear lady. I was carried away by your lovely, ravishing face. I can go along with a gag. Well, if, uh, if you like, I'll be a daughter to you. On nights that I don't have a date. Archie, what do I say now? Nothing. She's turning you down. Don't force your luck. <laughs> now, look, Miss Duffy, I got business to talk over with Mr. Coburn. Now, tell me, uh, Charlie, uh, how long have you been an actor? Fifty years. Fifty years, huh? Uh, don't you think you ought to settle down to a steady job? Where? Here. I'd rather marry Miss Duffy. Uh, look, Charlie, the job is a good job. We could, uh, we could use a front man here. A front man? Yeah, and you're just a type, you know. Prosperous, well-fed, well-dressed, business-like. A perfect phony. Uh, what do you say? But Archie, a job like this, 
<laughs> Wouldn't it tie me down? Not necessarily. I'm liable to fly you any time. <laughs> and the work ain't hard. You know, it take me. I found time to write a book. Uh, you might have heard of it, Duffy's first reader. You, <laughs> you see, I'm not tied down. I've seen the book. Oh, yes? Sir. <laughs> what did you think of it? You should be tied down. <laughs> Look, Mr. Coburn, as long as we're hurling two shays. <laughs> I happen to have seen your last picture, and only one thing kept me from asking for me money back. What was that? I sneaked in. <laughs> so please, leave us let bygones, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Duffy. Yeah, I think I'll hire the guy's a front man. Huh? Well, under me, of course, sir. Yeah, certainly. Sort of a second front man. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll let him uh, stand over near the cash register. Huh? Well, we can have him bonded. <laughs> well, uh, no, no, I don't think we'd have to. You know, he's, he's more the saddle type. Uh, not bright enough to steal and too old to run. <laughs> Okay, Duffy. Uh, we'll be with you in a second, Mr. Coburn. Uh, uh, hey, Eddie. Listen, Eddie, I've just been talking to Duffy. We've got to test this Coburn's character. Character? Yeah, that's one thing about me, you know, Eddie. I like honesty. I wouldn't have a guy around unless he's got uh, character. Well, how are you going to test him? We'll clip him in a poker game. That's <laughs> one sure way to find out about a guy, you know, playing poker. Oh, and if he wins, he ain't got no character. Well, it depends on how much he wins. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Did I hear you fellas say you were going to play poker? Yeah, Harry, you want to get in on it? Oh, no, no. I'd just uh, stand around and make suggestions. Huh? Uh, Kibitz, uh, huh? Uh, well, Archie, it's all right if the suggestions are good ones, isn't it? Well, such as... Uh... Well, such as... Ladies and gentlemen, if on a day when you have special plans, you wake up with a miserable headache because you need a laxative, it may seem as though those plans of yours make it necessary to put off taking that laxative till bedtime. Well, it just isn't so. For if you take sal hepatica right away, then this famous saline brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. So you can see you don't have to wait till night to take the laxative needed in the morning. Don't have to go through the whole day feeling out of sorts. And remember, sal hepatica has this additional advantage. Sparkling sal hepatica also helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So tonight, or first thing tomorrow, get yourself an economical bottle of sal hepatica. Remembering this, caution, use only as directed. Then any time you need a laxative, whether morning, noon, or night, see if you don't feel better faster when you take gentle, speedy sal hepatica. scare this guy off by mentioning poker right away, you know, this Coburn. I'll lead him up to it gradually. Oh, uh, Mr. Coburn. Uh, yes? Speaking of the World Series, uh, Tianx is a great team, huh? Well, uh, yes. Yeah, and that, that team that played him is good, the, uh, uh... The cards. Speaking of cards... <laughs> Uh, how would you like to indulge in a nice sociable game of, uh, say, uh, Jim Rummy? Well, frankly, I don't know much about cards. You don't, huh? No. About six years ago, I did play a game called, uh, uh poker. Poker? Uh, what kind of a game is that? 
Well, it's so long ago I forgot. Yes, so fine. Uh, why don't we play it again? Uh, maybe it would come back to the both of us. <laughs> oh, well, uh, all right. Uh, if you promise to be patient with a greenhorn. Oh, I'm even greener than you are. Uh, I'm much greener than you. Oh, no, I'm a lot greener than you. <laughs> These are the two greenest actors I've ever seen. <laughs> I'll uh, get the cards, Charlie. Uh, uh, hey, fellas. Fellas, listen, we got a real sucker here. I don't know a thing about poker. Oh, boy! Poker! You play poker, Finnegan? No. <laughs> no, no, I don't, but uh, I got some luck. Well, if you've got any kind of luck at all, <laughs> that's the kind. <laughs> now, Finnegan, all you got to remember in poker is one thing. So, what's uh... Don't go into a pot unless you got four of a kind. Uh, four of a kind, eh? That's right. Yeah. Don't go in unless you got four of a kind. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Cobain, uh, what do we play for? Uh, say, uh, one and two? Okay. A hundred or two hundred is all right with me. A hundred and two hundred. <laughs> well, that'd be okay by me, but uh, Eddie here's only a waiter, you know, so let's compromise, huh? Make it two cents and four cents. Uh, now, go ahead and deal out the cards. Do, uh, do you know how to deal? Well, I used to be able to. Now, let me see. Uh, three missing. <laughs> three missing, huh? Well, uh... Well, how can we play poker with only 37 cards? <laughs> well, uh, by a very fortunate coincidence, I, uh, I happen to have a deck of cards in my pocket. Oh. In your pocket? Uh, how long did you say it was since you played? <laughs> Six years. This is an old suit. <laughs> I wonder if I remember how to play this, uh, this poker. Oh, you'll remember. Now, uh, how are we going to play? Straight poker, jacks are better. Very four cards on a misdeal. Uh-huh. Uh, I got a queer feeling that that, that ain't such an old suit. <laughs> uh, now, stick to the cards, Eddie. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. What have I got here? Mm. 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 I'll open it. I bet uh, four cents. Wait, no, I don't, no, I don't. Leave it there. Bets down are dead. <laughs> hey, uh, I swear does that mean, bets down are dead? Well, it's sort of a poker time, you know, like a uh, baby needs a new pair of shoes. Uh, what are you going to do, Eddie? I'm dropping out. So, <laughs> me too. Me too. Uh, uh, take the money, Mr. Coburn. Oh, do I win? Yep, you win. Well, <laughs> This is, this is great fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you have? Uh, a pair of bullets. I mean, uh, a pair of one spots. You deal, Eddie. Uh, Finnegan, uh, by the way, uh, what did you drop out with? Oh, nothing. Three kings. <laughs> you dropped out with three kings? Oh, you told me to only go out with four of a kind. But... Okay, wait until you get four of a kind. Okay. Here's your card, gentlemen. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 right, there. Uh, I open it. You open it, Benny? Uh. You... Oh. In that case, I think I'll drop out. <laughs> I'm out, too. Well, I'll stay. Okay, uh, how many cards are you drawing? None. I'm standing pat. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm standing pat, too. Mm, very shrewd poker, Finnegan. Uh, here's my bet. So I raise you. I raise you. So I said it first. <laughs> oh, he can raise you, too, Finnegan. This is a democracy. <laughs> but uh, you can re-raise him. Okay, I re-raise you. I re-raise you. Okay, I raise and I re-raise. To the race and I re-raise your chance. I double it. Okay, I'll drop off. 
Uh, I ain't got enough dough. Now, wait a minute, Finnegan. I might thank you if you uh, got what I think you got. Uh, don't worry, Archie. I got them. You got them, huh? Uh, okay, that's good enough for me. Coburn, we raise you two. Four. Eight. Sixteen. Uh, Thirty-two. Sixty-four. Give me a pencil. <laughs> Ninety-seven. <laughs> now, what do you got? A straight ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. That's all. <laughs> Finnegan, show your card. Uh, uh, thank you, Arch. Let's see. Ten, four, two, seven. Ten. Finnegan, where's the four of a kind? Uh, there they are, four straight. <laughs> Finnegan. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Funny thing about poker, it's like swimming. Comes back to you just like that. Hmm. Hello, Duffy. Coburn's character? Well, he ain't got much character, but he's got a wonderful memory. <laughs> huh? Well, wait a minute, Duffy. He's just leaving here. Uh, good night, Mr. Coburn. Hey, hey wait a second. I, I think this ace belongs to you. It just fell out of your cup. Well, you can keep it. I have others. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you sent for your copy of Duffy's First Reader yet? If you haven't, do you mind if I tell you to hurry so you won't be disappointed? I'm not kidding when I say they're going fast. But the, because for only ten cents, what else could you get what Duffy's First Reader offers you? Some of the best parts of previous Duffy's broadcasts? Photographs of celebrities who have appeared at Duffy's? Archie's real-life story? A barrel full of laughs on every page. The complete story of Two Top Gruskin, the double-headed baseball player. And by the way, your boy at camp or overseas will love that. Why not get an extra copy for him? You can get all you want as long as they last by sending a dime for each one, sorry, no stamps, and your name and address, of course, to Duffy's First Reader, Box 67, New York City, New York. Don't send your dimes to the station you're listening to now. Send them to Duffy's First Reader, Box 67, New York City, New York. Well, it's time to leave Duffy's for the evening, but let's all meet here again next week when our guest will be Lucille Ball. And in the meantime, if you have a cold... Remember Minitra. If you need a laxative... Remember Salopatica. And if you have a half hour next Tuesday evening at the same time, remember... Uh, Duffy's, where you'll eat meat, eat out your mind, speaking, Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, next week, uh, Lucille Ball. That, uh, ravenous beauty. Yeah. Ravenous. Red-headed. <laughs> Has she got what? Has she got character? <laughs> I don't care with her, Duffy. Uh, with her, who's going to waste time playing poker? <laughs> okay, Duffy, good night. See you all right. Just a minute, mothers. A few seconds of your time now may help save your child hours of needless discomfort. Just remember this. Whenever your youngster suffers from aggravating cold symptoms, massage Minute Rub briskly on throat and chest. When you do that, Minute Rub quickly begins to soothe cold distress. And Minute Rub's menthol vapors help relieve that clogged feeling in nose and throat. This modern rub is greaseless and stainless. So be prepared at all times to get after your child's cold distress with Minute Rub. Famous modern rub that takes only a minute to use. Only a minute to start bringing soothing relief. That's Minute Rub. This is the Blue Network. <laughs> <laughs>